and we are back again. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, UTR proudly presents Talk Yo Shit. And tonight, as you can see, as you see the beautiful cast dressed up in all black, because we are representing Black History Month. That's right, folks, Black History. We're not going to just sit here and talk our shit, but we're going to try to educate a little bit. And before we get started, I want to give a disclaimer. Just know that every that comes out of our mouths and in the comments are our opinions so please be respectful please respect each other and respect us as the panel because we you know we're doing it for y'all at the end of the day but before we get started i would like to do the national black anthem so you people at home stay tuned and panel if you would please and you people at home bow your heads and raise your fist up please black power please <clears throat> I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm black and black and I'm black, y'all. I'm black, y'all. I'm black, y'all. I'm black and black and I'm black, y'all. I'm bleakly black, black and black, black. I'm black and black, yo, because I'm black and I'm black. And I'm black and I'm black, y'all. And I'm black and black and I'm black, y'all. And I'm black, y'all. And I'm black, y'all. I'm black and black and I'm black. All right, now that we got that out the way, let's get into it. <laughs> yeah, so what we about to do is we about to get into these questions. And like I say, as a, and not only, but I would like y'all to comment, share, and subscribe to the page, UTR, talk your shit. Um, subscribe to the regular Under the Radar page and like look us look us up on Instagram at Under the Radar as well. Like I said, we trying to grow this brand and we trying to just build as a family. You know what I mean? So we about to get into these questions. Excuse me for two shakes. All right. So the first question is, what was something that happened to you that happened to that? Excuse me, that happened in Black History that was important or happened in history period furthermore. So we gonna start off as we always do with the lovely ladies. And she just looking like Cleopatra right now over there in the cut with, you know, with her foxy brown afro. Professor, what happened to you? What happened in history that impacted you? Well, this will hit me deep and I didn't understand how important it was to me until I got older. But uh, in first grade, I was actually able to meet Rosa Parks. And actually was able to hear her side of the story because Rosa Park was my teacher's best friend. So that's something that happened to me that I find important. That's deep. That's super deep. That's super, super deep. <laughs> okay. 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 We gonna go to a fellow brethren, Meech. What happened in what happened in history, brother? Let us know what's going on. <laughs> uh for me, it was just um it was just living in Watts doing um during the riots of 92 i mean because everything within everything within walking distance was being like bar barbecued to the ground and it it was a life-changing experience but also it was kind of traumatizing being so young and being and bearing witness to that because everything was being burned like yeah like on directly the next block for me so it, it really helped me like it really made me like live that in fear of what's to come. So, okay, 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 okay. So we gonna go to the other lovely young lady, Miss Heather B. If you would please let us know something that happened in history that was important to you, that was a part of history. Me took my answer. Me took my answer. <laughs> Um, I have to go with that because of the fact that even though he was living in Watts, I was living at the time, like kind of towards downtown LA. So there was a lot of activity that was going on over there. And luckily for me, like my mother, she was very, she sheltered us. So we really didn't get a chance to see the full scale of what was happening, but we were watching it on TV. And it was a big thing because of the fact that it just showed how much non-progression at that time we had made in that situation because it's just like if you're basically just showing us that okay yeah we're black and you can do whatever the fuck you want to with us with our bodies and it didn't really hit until i got older because the fact again we're still going through the exact same thing today so to actually witness that and to see it happening at such a young age like 
me said, like it's a bit traumatizing, but it also opens your eyes to what you were going to see growing up. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, double A. I had the same answer. Um, the 92 watch riots, um, and it impacted me directly because, um, my dad had friends that owned their own businesses in the greater LA area. So seeing, um, black barbershops being burned down, black liquor stores being burned down, um, black, uh, black owned butchers, like that was, um, our black wall street being burned down in LA, in my opinion. Like one thing that we have learned from is that nowadays when we kind of ride and go, wow, we kind of loot businesses that are not white on. We, uh, we, we, I'm sorry, that's not black on. We go after those, uh, the Gucci stores and the van stores. Like we go after businesses that's not, not, not necessarily owned by black people back then. We kind of burned down and we, we just started our own community back then. And, and it, it, it affected, um, everyone, whether you're in the city and surrounding cities. Um, so definitely the, the 92 riots was one that, that comes to mind for me. Okay. Okay. As she sits there and sips on her Thunderbird, can you please let us know what they talking about in the comments? I don't sip Thunderbird, baby. Okay. But um, let's get into it. Um, Eli, he was with us, put up the hands. Let her know he was with us. Uh, oh, all my coworkers in here. Hey, Tia. Hey, Shonda. Hey, Jackie. Hey, you guys. Thank you for joining in. I'm sorry. Well, welcome. She, welcome. She didn't pretty much said everybody, so I'm just going to read uh, Payne's because, yeah, he said Afro Power. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she called off everybody. My bad. So was that, that was as far as comments, right? Pretty much everybody, you know, just raised their fists in solidation with us, you know, just. Right on. So. Now it comes to me. Now, my my answer isn't necessarily the '92 riots, but it's the it's the event that led to it, which was the Rodney King beating. The reason why is because, believe it or not, it happened on my birthday, which was March third, nineteen ninety two. So while they were serving up Billy, so while they were serving me cake, he was getting served up a Billy Club to the ass. So wow, in a sense. Jesus. That's what that's what impacted it. But like I said, I, I it, it really, as everyone said, it just it just brought the city of LA to an uproar, and it was just all bad, you know. Even though I wasn't I wasn't directly in it because I was a little too young to be around to be around that sort of ordeal, and my family kept me away from it. But it definitely happened, and it definitely, you know, we were definitely uh, just not right for because of that verdict and because of just the way that the police had treated us had treated uh a, a man who basically they lied on and, and at the end of the day um because i've been i've been here for 35 years i've never seen anybody do 100 miles an hour in a fucking hyundai so you know it just it just wasn't right at the end of the day so you and let alone you don't treat humans like that so we gonna keep it pushing to the next question, which is, who was your favorite inventor and why? And why? Um, we'll start with moi. I'm not gonna sit up here and lie right now. My favorite inventor was Lonnie Johnson. Reason being is because he invented the super soaker. I've had plenty of great summers with it. <laughs> it was a beautiful thing. You know, just running back, just running back down the street with the backpack on, splashing your friends, doing what you do, and you have to run back to your to your mama or your daddy's house and fill it back up at the water holes and them telling you stay out my water and all this other little shit. It was just a fun time for me. So and just to know that the best water gun ever created and and not just not just water gun, but Nerf, that was that was that was Lonnie Johnson as well. So just to know that one of the, the, the best water gun ever invented was invented by a black man is phenomenal to me at the end of the day. So we're going to keep it pushing and we're going to go to a lady, Miss Heather B, your favorite inventor and why? My favorite inventor has to be Garrett Morgan because he invented the stoplight. 
And I'm gonna be honest with you, that is probably one of the greatest inventions when it comes down to traffic because I've went to a country where there are no traffic lights. Trust me, they're necessary. They are very necessary. <laughs> So if there was anything, I would say definitely the traffic light. He's also created a couple of other things too, like a the sewing machine and also just other stuff. But the traffic light, necessary. Okay, okay. Yeah, so just know you wouldn't be able to stop, slow down, or go because of, of the black, black man. Because of the black man. You dig? You dig? Now let's keep it pushing with these great inventors. Double A. Uh, Thomas Jennings. Um, he was the first African American to be uh, granted a patent for the dry cleaning process. So, uh, you know, I, I was a kid who grew up, and uh, my parents always took their clothes uh, to the dry cleaners. Like I remember, um, mom's coming home with her nice uh, work uh, professional gear wrapped in that plastic with the with the white paper hangers and stuff, and it it it, it kind of set the value way on early on in my in my days about uh, how important dry cleaning is. So. Uh, you know, sucks to say that nowadays that the dry cleaners is not as effective as what it was back in the day. But definitely, I will never forget the importance, or I'll never uh, forget the how, how valuable the, the dry clean service is. So, Thomas Jennings. Thomas Jennings. So you I heard it there, there, folks. You heard it there, folks. You heard it here first. On talk your shit, dry cleaning. The reason why black men believe that we are we're just great. We're great all the way around. We gonna be great in these comments, Professor. If you would please be so kind. Oh, there's none. Okay, so we gonna keep it pushing to the Professor one more time, and she gonna let us know who the inventor is. Mine is Frederick Jones, and if y'all don't know who he is, he is the reason why you have a refrigerator, you have a freezer. He invented the cooling system, so he's the reason why we can get blood to blood banks food to places and food without spoiling. And he has over 61 patents, not to mention he has some patents for some other things. But the reason why he's my favorite, if y'all know me, I like ice and I chew mm -hmm. ice all the freaking time. <laughs> Whole cup right here. So that's why he's my favorite inventor, okay? Okay, okay. Just let your soul glow and let your ice chill as she just said. So so like i said we're gonna learn y'all a little bit tonight you know what i mean we're gonna try to keep the jokes to a minimum but also be respectful at the end of the day so we're gonna keep it pushing me favorite favorite inventor if you would please well for me my favorite inventor has has to be charles r drew and for those that are not familiar with with him he's the reason why we have like blood banks and blood and places to have like blood donations and and to me and to me it was definitely vital during the stages of world war ii and it helped and it helped save a whole lot of people that was involved during during that epic war from my opinion and the reason why i chose him is that i never really understood the need of blood donations and blood banks until until i got older and you need and you need like really healthy blood pumping through your system in order to in order to not only survive but only live let, let me add okay. to yours Meech. and you got to remember there's a certain blood that's very rare and so being able to have that for people who have that blood type is dope and also that same blood type you can use for any blood type which is all positive. That's a fact. Not that is true. And that guess what? True. And not to, go ahead. I'm sorry, Professor. She's all positive. Oh, wait. <laughs> and not to mention a rare one. And not to mention the doctor also was the first doctor to have a hospital that was all operated by black people. <laughs> Let's not forget it. So what we gonna do is we gonna operate and go to these comments and see if anybody's there. No, they just watching. They just watching. All right, so we gonna keep if, pushing. If y'all would like to comment, tell so, us who your favorite inventors are. Tell us who your favorite inventor is, and possibly even you know what what time in Black history that you know you can you can relate to, or anything that has to do with black with black blackness. Period. Excuse me. 
don't know, be shy, you guys. This is a subject. Don't be shy. Yeah, like I said, it is a serious, it's a serious topic, but at the same time, we can have a little fun with it. So just please comment. Yes, indeed. It please, it please do share your your experiences. We love to hear from your point of view. Exactly. Exactly. So we're gonna keep it pushing to the next question. Growing up, being taught about black history, what story stuck out the most to you? What story stuck out the most? Um, we're gonna start with double A. Why not? <laughs> the story that stuck out to you the most while growing up and hearing about black history. Um, the Selma to the Selma to Montgomery March, or did I say it backwards? No, Selma to Montgomery March. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 meant, it meant even more to me um, after I saw the movie Selma. Um, just knowing that people, you know, walked all the way from Selma, had to cross a bridge to, over to Montgomery to preach for protest. And the first time it happened, um, people got beat. People got, um, you know, it was women, it was children, or there was young, young adults, um, there were men. I mean, just seeing people march peacefully and then see those type of reactions happen to them was mind blowing to me. And then the second time it happened as uh, illustrated in the movie, um, when it was led by Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, he gets there, he takes a knee, takes a knee and prays and turns around and heads back home. That, that, that whole movie, that whole scene right there is, is powerful to me. Um, but yeah, the march from uh, Selma to Montgomery. Okay. 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 From Selma, from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. Hey, got to know your history a little bit. Now we're going to keep it pushing to Miss Heather B. If you would please let us know. Um, and how would it have to be the story of Harriet Tubman, honestly, only because when you look at, a, when you look at black history right now, and especially with what's going on, the strongest, entity within black history is a woman let's be honest and to know that well okay let's not go i won't go that that far but the strength of this woman the fact that she helped so many slaves to freedom is something that's magnificent to me especially when it was happening so I'm going to be honest with you. It's definitely the Harriet Tubman story. That's the only one that really resonated with me because I am a Black woman. And it just really does show the strength of how much she will go to save her people as well as her family. Right on, right on, right on. So we're going to keep it pushing to Meech. Well, for me, it has to be like, the origins of the of the Black Panthers and what they stood for, and seeing it portrayed in seeing it portrayed in movies, it it really it really just made me sit there and think like people people wanted to put like a negative stigma on the Black Panthers because they really didn't know what they were really about, but they were generally uh, generally about just the betterment of just the betterment of the of the communities that they were they were involved in and all they wanted was more equal more equality and better environments and and that really that really motivated like in my opinion today today's generations because you have you have people in today's generations that want that was better for the communities and society so that's why, that's why that story means absolutely everything to me. Right on. So do we have any comments, Ms. Professor? Yes, we do. We have one from Eli. He said Langston Hughes and his vivid imagery and schemes within his poetry and writing about the world around him. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Is it any more or is that it? No, that's it. Okay, we're gonna keep it pushing, but continue to comment, everyone, everyone. We would love to hear what impacted you in Black history and what, you know, what things that, you know, what inventions, what stories that stuck out to you the most when you were growing up. What, you know, we got we got more questions, but we gonna, you know, 
just like I say, comment. We need that proper participation. We need that energy in it at the end of the day. So we're gonna we're gonna go to the professor. What story impacted you? Ruby Bridges. And anybody mm -hmm. know about Ruby Bridges? She was a six-year-old girl mm -hmm. who helped in segregation in school. And here's the thing: people think that it was so long ago. It was only 60 years ago. And to this day, Ruby Bridges is still living. She's 67. But can you imagine being a six-year-old? going to school every day while you have adults taunting you, throwing things at you, hitting you, where you want to go sit in a classroom where you're the only kid with a teacher, where you have to sit there and eat by yourself. And every day she got up and did that, even though she was alone and by herself. You know how brave that is for a six-year-old? And the fact that she's still alive today and that ended segregation, so we are able to be in places together and unite as one. That's that's the dope part about it. So it's Ruby Bridges for me. Okay, okay. Ruby, Thank you. Ruby, you might as well say Ruby Bridges. Ruby Bridges. We salute you. We salute you and talk your shit. Just to be able to do it because I'm gonna be honest with you. My dad made me go. Tried to make me go. I'm taking that ass whooping every day. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. But to piggyback off of the professor, my story is also a little girl, but it was a story that we read about and it was a, it was a children's book and it was called Amazing Grace. And if y'all was to see the cover, y'all be like, oh, her. So basically the story was about a, a little girl who went to school and basically they, she wanted to uh, be Peter Pan in a play and that as she was raising her hand prideful you know everybody around her which was all her classmates told her that she couldn't be peter pan because she was a, a girl and then they told her she couldn't be peter pan because she was black but to and then when she went home feeling down her mother and her grandmother made her feel like she can do anything her grandmother even took her to a ballet and showed that because the uh excuse me took her a ballet and they saw romeo and juliet and juliet was actually a, a immigrant the lady who played her so she said if this woman can do it you can do anything and not only did grace show out the next day she she won she won all type of awards and she got a standing ovation from that and for me it stuck out because no matter what race what no matter what gender you can put your mind to it and put your heart into it. You can do anything at the end of the day. So that story stuck out to me most in Black history, especially especially it was being fun. It was taught to me in a fun way. So we're going to keep it pushing and we're going to keep it pushing to these comments. Professor, if you would please. Okay. We also got Eli. He said the story of the Black Panther organization and movie from the 90s also the malcolm x movie was everything and more for me um can i call her t i don't want to mess her name up you can just say tia <laughs> okay tia um the r is before the a but okay the story of black wall street is not talked about enough but as a kid it amazed me you hear lots of stories of the black struggle and not enough of the affluent black people yes Exactly. Talk your shit, dear. Talk your shit. We getting to that Talk though. We, to, we just warming up. We just warming up, people. We just warming up, beautiful black people. So we're gonna go to the next question, which is what was the most memorable moment in black history that you reenacted in school? You reenacted in school. And we're gonna start with hmm, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fifth grade, I had to do a book report. And believe it or not, like I said, I've always been a sports fanatic. And my, the person I chose at the particular time was Satchel Paige. Satchel Paige basically was a, um, a Negro pitcher who played for the Negro Leagues before Jackie Robinson broke the barrier. And he was one of the, he had, he, this man was able to throw a 105 mile an hour fastball at the age of 33. So I had to reenact this man. I had to give his story, which was a beautiful story at the end of the day. And then when jo after Jackie Robinson broke the barrier, he was able to get into the major leagues. And he also won Rookie of the Year at the age of 36. 
and just went on to do more and more great things in the league until he retired. And if I'm not mistaken, it was 19, like 36 or something like that. So that was who I had to reenact. And I actually kind of mad at my teacher because I got a C on that damn report. So I, it was it was all bad for me. I, I dressed up and all that shit. I, I mean, I didn't catch the ball when she threw it at me, but you know, it, it was just it was just bad for me. But we gonna keep it pushing, and we gonna go to Heather B. Um, I'm gonna be, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be honest with you. We never really reenacted anything, but there was a dance performance that we did at Mount Vernon and it was an African dance performance. The cool part about it was we got a chance to have like the the African raps like around our yes, just like that. <laughs> exactly like that. But it was cool because of the fact that it was an actual the person who helped us, she was actually from Nigeria. So all of the dancing that she pretty much taught us, she wanted to make sure that we were authentic and we were all on beat. But it was just so dope because, again, we had all the raps. It was all the head raps, everything. And it was just really beautiful to show appreciation to our African ancestors. So y'all was just in the middle of the, the auditorium just singing Ali Bumbaye. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we going to keep it pushing to double A. Somebody you had to reenact in, in school, brother. I mean, okay. The, I have a dream speech. Um, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, one of many. That probably was my, my, my favorite um, reenactment. Um, Jesse Owens was another one, but I ain't going to name too many because I know we got other people on this panel that have named their, uh, their reenactments. But uh, yeah, MLK and Jesse Owens were probably my, my, my two favorites. Okay. 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 I just want to say to the panel, lighten up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Smile. You ain't got to be mad. <laughs> so we're going to keep it pushing to the comments. Do we have any? So uh, we got Donald in the building. What hey, up? Donald. Hey. The story of John Carlos and Tommy Smith, how they threw up the fist on a podium in the Olympics, knowing they would get their medals taken away from them. He also says Satchel was, the, was that guy. Kirk is in the oh. building. He's showing love. He said, "Best and fam." Kirk, what up, Kirk? Hold on, hold up. Before before we move any further, please check out Kirk Northrup's show. Uh, it's called uh, Talk. We talk. We talk, talk too. We talk too. I don't know what time it comes on, but it comes on tomorrow. So, like I said, I think it's like five o'clock our time. Yeah, five o'clock our time. So you heard it there. Five o'clock our time. We talk to Kirk. In winter, they gonna do some shit. You know, they got some things lined up, and you know, it's nothing but special shit going on. So, you like I said, we love you, bro. Appreciate the love that you give us on your show. We ain't gonna do nothing but show you love over this way. So, like I said, y'all go tune in to that show, to we talk to tomorrow five o'clock our time. And do we got any more? No, that was it. Sitting, sitting there, sitting there looking like a soul train model and shit. But we gonna keep it pushing to the professor. <laughs> <laughs> um somebody you have to read that <laughs> it was two um actually Aaron took one of mine which was the I have a dream speech where it was actual actual contest and I actually won first place which was pretty dope um and then also we reenacted Harriet Tubman the Underground Railroad which was a dope experience in itself so that was two things that I reenacted as a child Oh, so you had to put Kanye clothes on, huh? No, no, okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> we gonna go to Meech. Thank you. We gonna go to Meech and uh, reenactments, brother. Reenactments, what you had to do in school? Mm, only one stuck out to me the most. Um, it was during second grade when when I had to take part of a take part of a assembly performance of reenacting the march to washington for civil rights now i re now really didn't get to do too much of it because it was pretty much because i was pretty much a part of the uh, the protest the protesters that was marching but but looking back on it now i see i see why that became vital to me just recollecting everything Right on, right on. Like I said, we're going to keep it pushing. And we got one more me. comment in a day Bye in the me. building. 
And she said, hey, what's up, y'all? What up, Day? What's going on, Day? I see you. I see you. I see you. So we're going to keep it pushing to the next question. What historic Black figure played a huge role in your life today? Today. Who played a huge role in your life today that is a historic Black figure? We're going to start with mm, the professor. I'm going with Langston Hughes and Maya Angelou because, okay. you know, they did so many things. They were activists. They were writers. They were poets. And growing up, that was things that I did, writing and writing. And I still write to this day, although I never show anybody, tell anybody, but I love to write. And also Oprah. And the reason why I say Oprah, before anybody get on me, is that she is a black woman. She's a woman and she's black. And she's about her paper and she made her money to get to where she is. And so that's why I chose Langston Hughes, Maya Angelou, and Oprah Winfrey. Talk and your shit. Point. Talk your shit. Talk your shit with the, with the Sealy wig on. So <laughs> we gonna keep it pushing. <laughs> okay, you, you ain't gotta come to the camera. It's okay. <laughs> you, gotta, you, ain't, you ain't gotta give me that that you told Harpo to beat me look. Um if we gonna keep it pushing and go to Meech, a story black figure that impacts you today. Well, just like the professor, mine is also a poet, and her name is Gwendolyn Brooks. Now, now many people may not know about her, but she did. But if you ever read her book, uh, Andy Allen, which which actually won a Pulitzer Prize and and not in 19, 1950, I believe. But um, it, it was because of it was because of reading some of her work that made me fall in love with poetry and writing it. And and it was actually because of her I got more involved in it. And I actually and many people may not know this, but I actually did my first my first book on just my collection of poetry alone. And one of and one of her poems to me that stuck out the most was it came it came from one of her other books. Um, I can't remember off top, but it's called the mother, and and the mother is just it just spoke about like passing down knowledge to her children and and basically highlights everything like everything mothers go through like either soon to be mothers or actually experiencing motherhood in the process okay 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 we're gonna go to miss heather b black historic figure that impacts you today i feel like i'm gonna get looked at weird when i say this but prince oh The reason why that I say Prince is because, especially within the music industry, he was probably one of the most powerful voices. He was unapologetic, unapologetically Black. He always stood up for what was right as far as, how can I explain this? He refused to let the industry take what was his, and he fought for it. He was one of the first who understood that masters meant everything. And he was going to do everything in his power to show that he wasn't a slave to this industry. The same with, and this industry is ran by the oppressors, let's be honest with you. So the fact that he was willing to give up his entire identity just to prove a point shows a lot. And also he was unapologetically himself within a world where you had to be put in a box. Prince was never in any sort of box whatsoever. He made his own fucking box. So me being a lover of music, I would consider him one of the most important people within my life when it comes down to historical black figures. Historic black figures, yes. She's mm. the Omni Farming known as Prince. Shut up. <laughs> ain't, ain't no wrong with that explanation at all at all at all so we're gonna go to the comments and see if anybody has spoken about historic black figures that or any other question that we have spoken upon professor if you please 
Eli says, I would definitely say Langston Hughes, Huey P. Newton, Martin, and Malcolm, Ozzy Davis, and Tupac. I'm with you. I'm with you on that, Eli. I also had Ozzy Davis on mine, but I didn't want to throw too many people out there. So I feel you. Right, right. Definitely a good one too. Okay. We'll we'll go with me. Um one of my favorite black one of my favorite black history um people who impacted me today, believe it or not, is Arsenio Hall, who became the first black talk night show host in nineteen eighty-nine. Mm. And he brought AIDS awareness to the forefront. He brought HIV to the forefront and a whole lot of other issues until and like I said, he even brought Farrakhan on, which is why he was uh taken off. But you know, we're not gonna get too deep into it. But if it wasn't for him knocking down the door, podcasts like us wouldn't exist at the end of the day, doing time doing this type of shit late at night, doing it during the day or whatever it is that we're doing. So I salute Arsenio Hogg, but and also Eddie Murphy because he was also the first comedian I was introduced to as a child. Like it was, it, you know, and of course, before him, you got Richard Pryor, Red Fox and all the other comedians that came before him and which are all great. But at the same time, when I was a child, I'm, I'm going to damn near say I idolized the man because he was rock star status by the time I saw him. So it was just something that I wanted to be, something I wanted to do. And like I said, I salute both of these men and you can find them on Harlem Nights as well. So we going to keep it pushing to double A an historic black figure that impacts you today since we all thought out what uh what i guess you can say wild card answers i'm gonna go with uh barack obama um wasn't first on my list but he definitely made the list as far as a uh, historical black figures and i know a lot of people have their own opinions about the guy but you know first black president um he did a lot for all people not just black people um health care um citizenship um, he was a someone who was uh, someone who believed in the, in the dreamers, um, the, the the Mexican families who uh, were separated from their family to Mexico. So, uh, big ups to uh, our first black president, Mr. Barack Obama. Still my president, by the way. Facts. We don't keep Facts. that. And let's not. And let's not. And let's God forgive Michelle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we going but we gonna keep it pushing, and we gonna go to the comments. Do we have any? Okay. Not right now. <laughs> okay, that's cool. But like I said, please, people, comment. Let us know who your historic black people who have impacted you today. Please, just like I said, just comment. Keep us in, you know, keep us in the loop. Keep us in your energy. Bring your energy here. We can use it at the end of the day. So we're going to go to the next question. What's a story that was told to you when you grew up, but you realized it was basically a lie? basically a lie so we gonna start off with mm, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> i knew he was going for aaron i was coming um, i was coming for you first but i went with a woman last time so <laughs> i i would say um the abraham lincoln freed all the slaves or he's oh. he saw he signed the uh, Emancipation, uh, Emancipation Proclamation, Proclamation. I had and it freed, it freed all, 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 all the slaves. And um, I think there, there's a reason why we celebrate uh, Juneteenth today, because as we found out later on in life, all the slaves wasn't free as as of when he signed that uh, Emancipation Proclamation. Um, but definitely the, that was one that I, I learned later on in life that, you know, um, all the all the slaves were free when Abraham Lincoln signed that bill. Facts took my answer, but good. I'm gonna I'm 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 reiterate it on it later. But when it gets Sounds to me, good. all right, cool. So we gonna go with Miss Heather B. If you would please let us know about something that you learned in school that you figured out wasn't completely true or not all true. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. The not the impact, but just slavery. Period. Like if you realize when you're a kid, it's very sugar coated because of course you're children. So they're not going to tell you everything that happened to slaves during that time. So growing up and finding out the horrific things that were done to us, it's like, are you kidding me right now? 
like it's just the more that you learn, the more that you dive into it, the more you realize that we were really hated. Like we really were looked upon as animals and nothing but that, just hearing some of the stories. Like I don't want to go too much into it because it's, you know, trigger warning, but definitely it was the sugar coating of slavery when we were younger versus what you really heard about it when you grew up. Okay. Good. You, you, Cause I thought you was about to say it was a choice and I was going to come through. And I, hell you no. okay. I thought I was going to come through no. <laughs> say I was going to come through this screen and choke you like ghost dad, but we gonna keep it pushing, and we gonna go to Meech. Uh, a story that you heard growing up about Black history, but you figured it out that it wasn't completely the truth, or it wasn't no truth at all. Well, I'm gonna be honest. Like there was only one that came to mind. Is just the whole perspective of whole perspective of racial profiling. When I was younger, and I really didn't know like the full extent, or people would just like you know, give give like shaded truth to it. But but once but once I got like you know in, into my teens, I started learning about more in depth like how racial profiling like really played like not only in the society that that we were living in back then, but how racial profiling fits into today's society. Like you could be like you could be pretty much unjustly unjustly um pretty much judged to the ex to the extent of something of something that's going on in surrounding areas. So for me racial profiling is it's more it's more than what meets the eye so don't don't let anyone tell you that tell you the shade of truth about it if you if you don't know what it is hey read read the stories you you're gonna learn a lot read the stories you got smartphones you can google just about anything in this world so therefore you can learn the truth at the end of the day is what the man is saying and we gonna see if we got any truth in these comments Tia said the story of Thomas Jefferson. She also says it was romanticized in the history books. Eli said fucking Santa Claus, LOL. <laughs> and then I realized Santa didn't come to the hood and we didn't have a chimney. But honestly, how they tried to paint Shaka Zulu as an enemy. Wait, wait, wait. Santa Claus not real? Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, so that's, that explains why I didn't get that. Yeah, that's that's for another time, bro. Okay, okay. Um, professor, a, a story that you heard while growing up, being taught Black history, but you realize wasn't the whole truth at the end of the day. When you Too very Easter Bunny, not just playing. Anyways, um, <laughs> you know Easter Bunny either. Uh, I'm gonna I'm go with it's it's it's. It's going to get a little deep for you. Uh, one, that Cleopatra was white and so was the Egyptians. And we find out that they wasn't. And that black people are the inferior race when actually we are the superior race because we are the only people with DNA that can produce multiple races. The only. Fuck yo fucking shit. Race. Talk it. Talk it. Church. And, and remember, these are our opinions. Also facts, though. Look it up, but be respectful. That's all we ask. Don't take anything we're saying with a gripe. Now, I'm piggybacking off what AA said, the, emanci the Emancipation of Proclamation, which was written in 1863. Now, as my man AA said, Abraham Lincoln didn't free a single slave, if you really want to be honest about it. And in reality, at that time point in history, he had no he had no power to do that. So when it was when basically the slaves that were free, it would they were part of what they would say another country, which was called the Confederate of the United States, just to name a few states, it was Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, and Georgia that were free at the end of the day on January 1st, where it was declared. So 
Abraham Lincoln didn't free us. That's why we do celebrate Juneteenth because he had no uh, he had no power to do so. And so so we just gonna keep it pushing and see if we got any more comments right now. We don't. But can you say Alabama, Arkansas, and all them other ones three times fast? Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia. Alabama, Arkansas. Florida, no, I said Georgia. fast. I, I said fast. This is as fast as I talk. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Okay. Next question. If you can meet, and or if excuse me, if you can go back and meet a historic figure, who would it be and why? If you can go back and meet a historic figure, who would it be and why? Mm, we gonna start off with Mitch. If you can go back and meet a historic figure, who would you meet and why? Yeah. Well, I gotta be honest. Um, I, have to, I have to say Muhammad Ali, and nice. and and for me, and for me, it goes well beyond like you know him being the legend in boxing. Like you know, he, you know he was a part of he was a part of you know part of Islam, and also and also for the fact that. There was a period in his top in in his time during his boxing career. He he was actually he was actually in exile, and he wasn't permitted to fight for about approximately. Four I would years. I have to say four, four years, four years because and the story behind that is it had to be him being involved and in being drafted to the armed forces and he refused. So, so I would, I would definitely want to know like more in depth, like his, his reason, his reasoning for why that transpired and also know, and also dig deep into the depth of his, um, of what he played in the boxing world, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Me, Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time. The greatest of all time. Yeah. It ain't Floyd like a butterfly, years. sting like a bee. Performance going down in three. And Floyd Mayweather's not the greatest boxer of all time, just to, be, just to put that out there as well. So, exactly. we going to go with the professor. If you would please let us know a historic person that you would go back and meet, and why would you go back and meet them? Bessie Coleman. If you don't know who she is, although Amelia Earnhardt was the first woman to fly, um, Bessie Coleman broke barriers with women flying. So I would want to go back and talk to her just to see what was her thoughts and where was she at when she decided this is what I want to do. And how did she go about doing it, being that one, she's a woman, two, she's African-American. So yeah okay okay double a who would you go back in history and meet and why um alfredo bowman also known as dr sebi um to a lot of you guys well this can be very controversial because i know he's a honduran man um if anybody is a good uh ge uh geography major you'll you know where honduras lies on the map but um with that being said, I would just say uh, um, so much that he brought to this uh, world, just being a, a herbalist, um, not taking medicine that the, the pharmaceuticals companies wants you to use, just knowing your body, knowing what's grown from the earth and how much it can um, heal the body um, if, if it's if it's done correctly. Um, that would be my one guy I would love to meet before he would have passed away. Okay, okay, okay. Do we have any comments? Yeah, hold on. I gotta refresh. Don't judge me, y'all. Um, let me just do it from here. Eli said I would have I would love to have met Red Fox and Richard Pryor and Della Reese simultaneously just to understand the development of who they were and why they chose the path they chose. That's dope. Super, super dope. I see you know no offense. Yeah. Um, Miss Heather B. If you can go back in history, who would you would love to meet and why would you have loved to meet them? I have two people. I would have loved to meet uh, Madam C.J. Walker as well as Michael Jackson. 
Uh, one being Madam C.J. Walker, because she was one of the first successful Black entrepreneurs. I would have loved to pick at her brain a little bit just to see, especially within that time, how she was able to continue to push forward and become the successful woman that she was. And also with Michael, just his work ethic. Like he was a genius when it came down to music, but just when you watch videos, uh, the behind the scenes of just how he literally paid attention to every single intricate thing that went along with the, sh with the song, with the production, with the shows, everything. Like, I just would have loved to speak with him and just, just kind of tune in on the behind the scenes stuff. Okay. 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 She wants to be a su successful entrepreneur as well as learn how and get the work ethic to be one. So for me, if I could go back and meet someone, even though this man was young when he passed away, I would love to meet Tupac Shakur. Reason being, is because I would have loved to have picked his brain about the movement and what his what his mother and his his stepfather and his um his real father went through and how does all of that relate to his life when he was struggling in his rap career and also just just furthermore just see if uh I would love to have seen how he would have could potentially have grew as an artist if he was still here today. It, that's just one of my things is, you know, not too deep, but that's just me at the end of the day. <laughs> so we're going to see if anybody has anything in the comments before we move on. <laughs> and we do not. And we are going to go to this question. If you can go back to a time in black history, where would it be and why? We're going to start off with moi. <laughs> I would love to go back to, and somebody had already said it, but to see Black Wall Street. I would love to see all Black businesses thriving to where we were, had successful businesses as such as bakeries, banks, and being just the epitome of what we can be at that particular point in time and how we can, and I would honestly love to pick their brains and see how we can thrive further today and just continue that uh that dominance that we had on them at, at that particular time. So Black Wall Street is a time I would love to go see being a black man. So we're going to go with Miss Heather B. Who, what time would you go back to in black history and why? Honestly, I would have to say the 70s. Um, I feel like the placement of the 70s is like right after, you know, the turbulent 60s with the segregations and just everything that was happening. Going into the 70s Black, I felt like our culture was starting to become a lot more, what's the word I'm looking for? We were influencing the culture a lot more. And it was just a bit of a, it was just a bit of a big difference. It, everybody was becoming a lot more comfortable with being Black and being themselves. So definitely I would go back to the 70s as being a Black person. As being a Black person person yes 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 um we're gonna go with one more double a what would you like to go to what period would you like to go back to in history and why hey you remember that one key sweat bobby brown verses where he said uh i see you look at my playlist zero mm -hmm. I feel like you look at my answer tonight because my exact answer is <laughs> <laughs> brother, great minds thinking like brother what's, what's what's the problem there ain't no wrong with that man share your um, answer brother but absolutely black wall street um black businesses thriving um thrive to the point where it was so much hatred that they had to burn it to the ground um but definitely um black wall street would have been an era i would love to see yes sir yes sir black wall street that's what we need to do as a which that's what we need to do again. We need to get another Black Wall Street going. And not, I'm not talking about the game shit either. So if you could please go to the comments and let us know what they are speaking of. If there's a time that people wanted to go back in history, what would it be? Tia said, Coretta, I want to know what it is. What was her mindset at home with her kids while she waited knowing her husband might not make it home? Hmm. Eli, I'm not going to read your comment because that is my freaking answer. 
But I ain't doing it. Eli also, said, also he would like to also. go back to the Harlem Renaissance. That's a good one. That actually that was, was my time. Well, well, you just you you're just gonna elaborate on it when 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 it's your time, mm -hmm. my sister. We're just gonna elaborate on it when it's your time. But like it I technically said, is her time. <laughs> It is our time. Technically but, is, yeah. But but yeah, um, but like I said, just for the simple fact that um as T as uh, Tia said, uh Coretta Scott, I, I would also love to see what Betty Shabazz thought about it as well. Because um when Malcolm was doing his thing, it there was a whole lot of hatred, there was a whole lot of it was just a whole lot. But we gonna go to the professor, you ain't gotta roll your eyes, if you would please let us know. Anyways um the heart of renaissance because that was like at that pivotal moment where there was culture there was fashion there was music there was theater and it was just this vibe that was so amazing and i would love to go back and just see it and then you got to kind of experience it, it through langston hughes writing so that would be a time of where i would want to go back to okay okay as well put and well said my sister Meach, a time you will want to go back to in time a time you will want to go back to and why i i'll have to go with uh during the time when brown versus the brown board of education was happening because if if you're familiarized with the story of olivia brown like she 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 had she wanted to go to a school she, that was closer to home but but in the midst of it she was she was basically ordered to bus to a, a school that's further away and that and they was not there was not really you know kosher about that so so that's when uh the trial of brown versus a uh, board of education was was in present and it, it in my opinion it started it started like a, a epidemic of where of where young kids can not not just young kids but young black kids can have the choice to receive the proper education that's that's within their realm and honestly and honestly to me that played a part in people receiving just as just as much as the same education as everyone else i can dig it i can dig that i can dig that heavy so do we have any comments professor no no okay so we gonna go to the next question which is what black invention are you grateful for? What black invention are you grateful for? Not who your favorite inventor is, but who, what black invention are you grateful for? And we're going to start off with Miss mm, Heather B, if you would please. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Um, a lot of people don't know it, but it was actually a black woman by the name of Sister Rosetta Tharp that created rock and roll. It wasn't Elvis with his pelvis shaking. It was a black woman. And if it wasn't for her, we would not have a lot of the music that we have nowadays. So definitely that's an invention that I'm grateful for is rock and roll. Okay. Okay. Me, mm. a black invention that you are grateful for. I have to say the cell phone. I mean, because yep, you, you have to look at it like this with the cell with with communication. You only had the house phone, but once the cell phone came out, once the cell phone came out, it opened like a new door of just communicating with communicating with other people and you don't even have to be at home. I mean, you could be out walking, you could be out driving and you could just be chatting up with people while, while, while doing so. And you have to look at, you have to look at from when the cell phone first started to where it's transcended into now, like 
now we <laughs> now we done went through like four four G. Now we got five G network network operating phones. I mean, I feel like I feel like that's one adventure that's gonna never gonna stop evolving. Okay. The cell phone. Just a back off of that. Could y'all imagine still walking around with that big ass brick from the eighties? <laughs> <As I could. laughs> hey, hey, I, I, met, I imagine I'm doing it <laughs> while watching uh, episodes of Saved by the Bell. You know, <laughs> you know when they had that big ass fucking big ass remote like phone and shit with the antenna. Okay, okay, the cell phone. The cell phone is the the man's greatest invention. Okay, so we're gonna go to the professor, then we're gonna go to the comments. If you please let us know what your greatest invention is that you're grateful for. Excuse me. The heater. The core. <laughs> the heater. <laughs> if y'all know me, I'm ah. super anemic and I'm always cold. So this let's just say the first furnace which led to the heater, which also led to the thermostat. So I'm grateful for the heater because I am always cold. And yes, I'm always cold, but I do always eat ice. Don't judge my life, judge your mama. That's all I'm saying, okay? Okay, okay. Don't judge your life. Don't judge your life, judge your mama. She's grateful for the heater. So she got the ice machine. The the heater is the balance. It's about, that is, it's about that is def- that's definitely useful during them cold winter nights. I'm telling you. <laughs> How about the last couple of nights? Okay. Especially when you stay in Victorville. So it, oh. yeah, definitely. So we're gonna go to the comments. If you would please let us know what they are saying in the comments. Eli said pillows, sheets, covers, a bed. Yes, God. <laughs> yes, God. Yeah, I can imagine sleeping That's on the floor. Shit. I can't imagine sleeping on this wood floor right now. So I, I, can't I, sleep on the floor. I can't even get down on the floor. My knees is messed up. So yes, I'm grateful for that. He also said the air conditioner. Yes. On a hot day. Yes, God. Yes, on a yeah, day. Day. Uh, no, ma'am. It's necessary. Get, it get one ten. It get one oh one oh nine up here sometimes. So yes, I am very I'm grateful. Twenty all year. For 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 a damn. I, I can't day. imagine. Yes, Lord. All right. So we gonna go with me. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let my fellow brethren go last. Um, I'm gonna say, the, just watch. <laughs> right. My greatest invention to to this day was create was by, is the actual first PC that was uh invented by IBM, and which was invented by a black man named Mark Dean. He's also the person who developed color to the computer. So the reason why you can see us in these beautiful melanin, melanin collections that we have is because of another, because of another black man. And he also, <laughs> he also enabled the technology to where a keyboard and a mouse and a printer can be hooked up to your PC. So the reason why you're able to print and then walk to the printer because of a black man, the reason why you can have a mouse that is, um, connected to your PC is because of a black man. So that is to me the greatest invention. And we gonna swing it to double A if you will please be so kind. Um, to piggyback off of Heather, um, I'm going with the first ever black uh, music record label, which is Black Swan Records. Um, not so much of an invention, however, um, with my love of music, um, I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I read okay. a comment too early. Yeah, it's a comment. <laughs> um, but yeah, Black Swan Records, and then closely, uh, a closely second would be uh, Motown Records. But yeah, those would be my two favorites. Very Gordy, okay. and uh, go ahead. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. I, I heard that, brother. Yes, hmm. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, We're going to go to the comments, if you would please be so kind. Hey y'all, Edward is in the building, y'all. Edward is in the building. And Edward's answer was George Crumb created potato chips. And he's grateful because he needs his salt and vinegar chips, y'all. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not a fan of those. Vinegar? Okay. 
I'm not a fan of that flavor, but I dig where you're coming from. I right enjoy here. salt and vinegar sometimes, but it's an acquired you know taste. Me, I swell acquired. up too much, so I can't have too much of the salt. Oh damn. Mm. <laughs> okay. But I'll take it. I can understand that. Down. Yeah. I'll take a chip anywhere. And, and mm. So we're gonna keep it pushing to the next one, which is if you can change a part of history, what would it be? What would it be? And we're gonna start off with mm, the professor. <laughs> if you could change a part in history, what would it be? I actually got two. Okay. I tell the Africans not to get on that damn boat. That's Ooh. one. And honestly, I tell Mamie not to send Emmett down to the south. Mm. To be honest with you, I really would. Mm. Okay. Because I just, I don't have kids of my own, but I have 17 nieces and nephews. And if something like that were to happen to one of them, I'd be devastated. So I, I, I would definitely tell her, don't send him down to the south. Trust your okay. first judgment and keep him up there with you. That's, okay. That's a good one right there. That's that's deep. That's deep. So, people, if you can change a part in history, what would it be? If you can change something in history, what would it be? And we're gonna keep it pushing to the panel. Double A. If you can change something in history, what would it be? Um, slavery. Period. Swag. Swag. Period. <laughs> I mean, there, there, there's the dot right there. Yeah. So we gonna keep one, it pushing. One, one word answer. I love it. I love it. Heather B, what would you do? <clears throat> I actually wrote this one down. Um, that most of our ancestors down. would never <laughs> brain were never brainwashed by the oppressors. Uh, the way the power the power within us honestly has been died down a lot because we were made to be inferior to these people who felt like they can just take advantage of everything, our our gold, our jewels. They stole from us. So it would be to never be brainwashed by religion, to know that there is a strong power that de that dwells within us. And to be honest with you, the reason why that they put us in the position that they did is because they know exactly how much power we have. And if we were all ever to stand up, it would be a wrap. Talk your nice. shit. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Can we go to the comments, please? Yes, we have one, and it's from uh, Payne. He said, I Hello, will stop Payne. Malcolm X death. Hey, Payne. How you doing? Glad that you met, man. <laughs> yes, stop oh, Malcolm X I'm sorry, X's we death. have another one, too. Just popped okay. up. Go ahead. Um, Tia says, slavery, Martin's assassination, Malcolm's assassination, and so much more. I feel you, Tia. Talk your shit. Trust me, we we would if we if we can stop everything, we would trust and believe that. Payne so, also says, "Good morning, family." Good morning. Good evening. <laughs> good morning, Meech. If you could stop something, if you can stop history or rewrite it for that matter, what would it be? Well, for me, it would have to be JFK's uh, assassination, because if you have, if you have to look at it like. Really, JFK, he really stood for what 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 everyone that's fighting for civil rights stood for. Like he he was all about he was all about democracy and equality, and as it sucks that he really did get the full opportunity to put put those plans into action, and. And if I if I were to went back into time to change that, I would love to I would love to like pretty much just stop that, stop the assassination, because he will he will definitely would love to see like the birth of change and equality and civil rights for everyone. Talk your shit. Talk talk that shit. Everybody well, talking shit. everybody talking shit tonight. Yeah, I see everybody talking tonight. The panel, but, everybody in the comments. But um, we need y'all to talk more shit in the comments. But 
Ironically, everyone took my answer because my first one was I would have told Malcolm not to make that last speech because if you guys read the book and saw and saw the movie, you know, which is the updated version of it, um, Malcolm didn't feel right. Nothing went right for him that particular day. So if if it was up to me, I would have went back and told him to just go home, to just go back to your hotel, to go somewhere, because it I felt if because Malcolm started to embrace the brotherhood of all men into where he to where he was able to see people for their hearts and not as opposed to their just the color of their skin at that particular time. So if I would love to have see him progress in that direction as opposing to just saying that, um, you know, what, what, what it was he was saying in his earlier speeches before he realized that most of the stuff that he was saying was um, not necessarily the truth, but it wasn't all true. So I would love to have seen him progress. And if I could, I would love to have seen to I would love to have stopped him that particular day, that dreadful day. Um, and I also would have said I would not have told JFK to take that ride. And that's why we're laughing because me and him discussed that question and he said <laughs> and, he was gonna write that. <laughs> and then when you said it, it just made me laugh. And, and these smart people took it from me. But you know, like I said, to each his own. We like I say, I love the fact that you know we minds think alike. That's we why we all jail together at the end of the day. So, like I said, your answer is my answer at the end of the day, and I love it. And I would love to see pe more people answer in the comments, if you would please. There's nothing in the comments, but y'all come on. Don't but be shy. On, don't be shy. We, like I said, we ain't getting too deep. We ain't getting too hectic. Just be respectful. That's all we saying. And listen, so, y'all. I know y'all used to the laughing, joking, and everything like that. But sometimes it's okay to be a little serious. It's okay for a little controversy. Talk y'all shit. Please do. Please do. That's, that's all Especially we have. in honor of Black History Month, you know. Yes, it we don't, is. We don't it's definitely time to we're sound. Gonna to it, we're gonna try to educate, but keep it serious at the same time. So yes, yes, we, and also also have a little fun with it, but not too much fun because Black History is nothing to play with at the end of the day. Which is gonna send us to the next question: Do you think Black History is prominent in today history? Why or why not? Do you think it's prominent? And for those of us who need a dictionary. That means important or famous for that matter. So, we're so. Do you think Black history is important in today's uh, history? If so, why or why not? And we're gonna start with me. Black history isn't important in grade school, is what I would say, because basically, because basically, like I said before we are taught lies as other questions have obviously have shown like Lincoln free to slave this is stuff that is printed up by um people that agree with each other that believe that <laughs> that believe that it's okay for them to teach bullshit to the to the children basically so no so no to me it's not important at all so we're gonna go to the professor since she got her hand on her hip sitting in a chair looking I'm, you know I'm, not gonna say, I'm not gonna say what you look like but go ahead so since you want to use my wording not the way word. it is worded is history books are printed out as people who came together and agreed upon what to write in history and then put it in the book so that's why everything is not put in there because everything is not agreed upon it's what is agreed upon is inside the history i feel like black history is important today as it is back then because it's still a sense of knowledge of where we come from of what's going on so yes i do feel like it's important today as it was mm -hmm. then the only reason why okay yeah i get it no 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 and this is why you have been told certain things right that mm -hmm. were not true but remember i said in the beginning i as a first grader met rosa parks and actually got to hear her side of the story so it is still important because you learn things whether it's true or not 
it makes you think so that when you get older, you can look it up and find out if it's true or not. So, yes, it is important. Okay, I get it. I was looking at it from a whole nother point of aspect, but thank you for correcting me. So, we're going to go with double A. Is it, is it important or is it not important? Black history will always be important. Um, I think us sitting on our platform that we sit on tonight is black history. Um, I, I, I think that um, my personal opinion, I think that this new generation or us now who is becoming a little bit up in, in age has to now pass this information on to the to the younger people coming up. And um, if, I feel like we're not doing the greatest job at that. So um, yes, they put us in a month that only has 28 days, but I feel like if we're not passing this information on, um, there won't be no black history um, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. Um, we got to stop letting other people take our culture, take our uh, origins and flip it into what they want to flip it into. Um, so you make a nonprofit organizations, and I'm not going to say any names tonight, but uh, yes, black, uh, black Lives Matter, but at the end of the day, if it's not being supported by black people or if it's not being uh, pushed by the right message then does it really matter so black history will always matter um from any aspect e everything that we do in life today is, is black history in my opinion swag talk your shit talk in other words shit. black history is american history period Undis shit. undisputed facts there because if it wasn't for black this world wouldn't run correctly believe that <clears throat> So we gonna go to the comments. Well, we got we got quite a few comments in here. Let's go. Hold on now. Hold on, we on now. Okay. Ever said, of course, because all world history is black history. Say that there. Um, Tia said, hell no. They trying to erase the history of all cultures, not just black. They want to try and make everything vanilla. Mm -hmm. You gonna talk your I'm, shit, I'm, girl? I'm vanilla. So what, what, what that mean? <laughs> Okay. Uh, she also said anything that doesn't make the other half comfortable, let's do away with it. Hmm. Uh, Payne says, as a kid, I did not like history. It felt like watching the news. He also said, but as an adult, I can appreciate the lessons passed to him. Ever said, I got a calendar that tells me of black facts every day of the year, just for that reason, because we don't hear enough. Okay, I need you to uh, shoot that this way so I can know what calendar that is, sir. Um, Indeed. Eli said, Black history is definitely prominent in today's time because we are world history and it's even more needed today than ever and everlasting, growing, and evolving. And it's up to us to what we allow to be written or told. We as Black people are each other's back to the chair. Say Amen. that again. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. Say for the uh, people in the back. Payne said, sorry, I'm trying to handle babies at the same time. It's okay. We don't hey, care. We know what you hey. need. I was because I was about to say, how you stuttering a text message? But I was like, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Human, animal, or plant. Edward says black lives matter. You sure about that? Because um they don't support all black lives, they stand for everything except well, never mind. Go look it up and you will see. I said what I said. Oh no, I know what you said, and I know what you meant, and I, I understand what you mean when you say that. I, I actually am agreeing with you. I, uh, I, I, agree. I, agree. I, I didn't want to I didn't want to bash a movement on on our show. So I mean you stand yeah, we, we all agree. stand in agreement. There's a difference between bashing a movement and speaking an opinion. He only spoke his opinion. That's how he felt. So we're not going to say that it was bashed. And we technically all. bashed. All he did was state facts, and that was it. We can keep it sure. ain't, ain't no wrong. Ain't I no wrong with facts, man. It's all it, about. Though. It's all about. It's all about passing around <laughs> information. Oh no, uh, Edward. Uh, he said, "Yeah, absolutely." So he's going to pass that on. He said, "I'm not bashing my apology. No, you're not bashing. You're good. Remember, this is where you talk your shit." You mm -hmm. can speak your opinions as long as you're respectful, so you're good in my book. Exactly. So, like I said, talk your shit. Continue to talk your shit. We love the energy, brother. And like I said, you may teach, you may learn us something today. So I'm unapologetically yeah. woke, y'all. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ain't no okay. wrong with that. Okay. So, um, who I didn't ask this answer this question? Who didn't answer it? Okay, Miss Heather B, if you would please. 
I mean, to be honest with you guys, you guys have already given the answers that I was going to give, like, period. Black history is history. We, this freaking country was built on our fucking backs. Let's be real. So you can't sit here and subject us to just this one 28 days when it should be included in all history, period. Like, like I said, I can't really speak too much more on it because again, everyone has said the exact same thing. But yeah, it's just, it's history. No point blank, period. Point blank, period. She and I'm it. sorry. And also it means a, the reason why that it's important right now because a lot of the cycles are still continuing. Again, we wouldn't have the, we wouldn't have the, the be a, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement if they weren't continuing the same rhetorics from freaking, you know, 60 years ago. So it's it's a must that back black history is talked about. It's a must that it's constantly like information, like it's a reason that this the generation underneath us is going to do research and learning about their history. Talk your shit. Uh before before I go to means uh professor, what page rhetoric on? <laughs> Okay, never mind. I find it 75. Okay, <laughs> I think me is black history prominent today or not? And I'm, I'm about to say, like, what most of everyone said on here, like, I believe, I believe it is, it is prominent today and also very vital because. No matter, no matter what people may may pass around like the negative about negative about you know the history black history and everything no matter what is negative that's said about it you have to look at it we basically became a part of the fabric of America over time because we as we as African Americans we we definitely broke grounds and we basically set the bar each each and every time and and you have to look back on the history like everybody everybody that was prominent back then like they set they set the blueprint for everything that's positive that's going on in today's world so so i have to piggyback on what everyone said like we basically we basically built this country and not to be a part of it is a cardinal sin within itself. Talk your shit, bitch. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. Do we have any comments that need that where people are talking their shit continuously? Not this time. Not at this time. Okay. So we're going to go to the next question. Should Black history be taught throughout the school year or only during Black History Month? Should it be talked through the year or through Black Hi or just Black History Month itself? Hmm. We gonna start with Double A. Um, this kind of piggy up piggyback off the last question. If we all sit here and say Black History is, is America's history, and we all took American history in high school or throughout our days of school, then by by far it should be taught year round. It shouldn't just be a put in the, the month that has at least amount of days in it. Um, so for sure, if, you know, again, if we saying black history is American history, we shouldn't just be talking about it in just the second month of the year. Okay. We're going to keep it pushing to the professor. Should black history be taught throughout the year or just black history month itself? As Aaron stated, and as I stated earlier and several people before that, black history is world history. And everything that happens or that has happened, if you take away all the black inventions from this world, the world would be a shitty place. I'm just gonna let you know that now. So it should be taught year round, every day. Plain and simple. Plain and simple, plain and simple. Um, Meech, should black history be taught throughout the year or just the, in the month of February? And and everyone everyone just stated like it like i said it's going like parallel to like the last question but but i would say yes it should it should be taught 
it should be taught like year round because look at it it it's too much black history to be taught just in one month like you will have to spread everything out because as we all know black history is evolving daily so to not so they only be taught that like once a month is it's insane so so i would have to say it it would have to be taught like year round not only for like educational purposes but you you now have that information to pass down to future generations coming up and and they can pass on that information and the next generation the next generation and the next generation like you learning everything in a in a revol in a revolving perspective so you have the you have the ability to pass down such vital information and moments to future generations to come talk your shit beach talk your shit can we talk our shit in the comments, please? Well, we sure can. So T says, you shouldn't have to emphasize the black in history. It should be a natural spoken upon thing. We shouldn't have to wait until February to learn about the amazing things we have done as a culture. And that's not just on the school systems. That's just us as a whole in this country and not meaning us as black people. Talk your shit. Uh, Ooh, talk it. Eli said, uh, black should definitely be a consistent curriculum because we are not just black for a month. We are black every day, 24 seven. Yes. Yeah. Um, Payne said every month should have new black history included in each lesson as we as a people have way more value to the life of all people to be keep under the rug, to be kept under the rug, which is true because every year we are taught the same typical black people when there's so many people out there yes um eli yeah. said i meant to put black history not just black my bad lol it's okay uh, yeah, you good yeah. brother. You, understand what you, you good brother we, we got what you meant you understood the assignment it's fine but we got what you meant. that's definitely true uh pain and, and that's actually a great fucking comment yeah Barry. Very, 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 so no matter what way you look at it, you can sit here and say black all you want to. Again, if it wasn't for us, this country would not be what it is. So why not have it included in the curriculum 365? That, this is very true. Piggybacking off of what people are saying in the comments and in the and on the beautiful panel. Yes, black history, black history should be taught every single day. The way that the way that people will excuse me when you go to grade school you know um not grade school but um high school middle school and all that you're taught basically english mathematics pe and all this other all this other shit in six periods black history should definitely be added to that period because as we have stated we probably have we have so many inventors that have invented so many things and it should be taught because like i said this world wouldn't run correctly if if it wasn't for the beautiful blacks that came that had the knowledge and that had the the willing the drive the desire and the know-how to basically push forward and to create these things that we still use in this world today just as a sidebar do y'all know that a black man created the remote control so when you're able to turn your tv on from your bed because you're too lazy to get up and go turn it on yourself a black man invented that so so just know that every day a new person should be learned should be learned about because learned? we should be should be should you should learn excuse me i i i i i graduate i graduate taught about you should be taught about you should be taught about and you should learn about someone new at least every day in this in this school curriculum because a lot of this shit 
and useful, but black history is. Believe that. So if you can please talk your shit in the comments and find out what they talking about. So we have Vaughn in the building. And Vaughn What's up, Vaughn? What's going on, Vaughn? What's happening? Um, we have to learn and read about their history year round and what to do. She gets a little, yeah, teach us year round. It's mostly about the struggles of slavery. Therefore, conditioning our children to have that subconscious of fear of what they believe is fear. To live in a harmonious world, we have to recondition our children. Wait, I'm sorry. No, I was right. If we teach them to in rotation of all history year round and normalize just teaching our children history and not racial identified history, in my opinion. Well, talk your shit, Vaughn. Talk your nope. shit. You got a lot of big words mm. in there. You know, you this is up a, a little bit. This made me sound like I couldn't read, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this this is his first time here, so thank you very yeah, much for coming. We appreciate yeah. we appreciate yeah, you. Come yes. back for more. Come back for more. And uh Payne says, Y'all so damn knowledgeable. Thank you, Payne. We tried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so so, so is everyone, back. so is everyone in the comment section, man. We learned like, a lot. Yeah. You gotta feed this. You gotta feed this, brother. You gotta feed this sometimes. You gotta feed Von this. says, right. my bad. It's okay, Von. I just want them to know that I do, it. Hey. I do know how to read. It's just that, you know, sometimes people mess up and then it sound like I can't. And I just want them to know that I do know how to read because I got knowledge with W. Um Desiree's in the building. She said, Hi everyone. Hey, Desiree. Hey, oh, Welcome yo. back. Welcome back. And then Von said, OFC, love the love. I we love you. Believe that. We le believe that. So, what we gonna keep doing is we gonna keep pushing to these questions, and we're gonna go with um, who is one of your favorite black actresses or actors in history? In history, who is one of your favorite black actors in history? Doesn't have to necessarily be far back can be up to date y'all want to say kevin hart i don't know why you would say that but it's just saying but who is your favorite black actors or actresses in history so we gonna start off with me who is your favorite black actor or actress hmm. i have to go with the episode talented and strong actress angela bassett oh you motherfucker! Okay. <laughs> This is not the time to curse okay. the black man, okay? Hey, hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> but 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 it's it's something about her presence that in every role she every role she took on, it just it just screams empowerment. Like, you know, like you know, her being in Panther and being in Malcolm X or Akila Akila and the B. I didn't know that. Yeah, she was in there. Mm -hmm. Go to bed, Joseph. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh! sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I just had my hey. moment. You yeah, moment. You, you, have to, you have to reflect back but, to the American but, dream. But right? actress Angela Bassett, I dig that. I dig that very heavy. Miss Heather B, favorite actor or actress? <sighs> he took my answer. <laughs> Oh my God! It so, wasn't my fault. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, Angela is definitely one of my favorite actresses because of her her diversity. I really, really love that she is not afraid to take on certain roles. And also, Viola Davis is another one. Uh, she doesn't get her. I, I feel like she doesn't get her flowers enough for her portrayals of certain characters in certain movies like she's also very diverse as well too um also um i don't know how to say her name i'm gonna try on jaina ellis oh okay uh-huh yeah i know and i never to be honest with you it after watching lovecraft country i really didn't realize how many movies and shows she actually has been in and she is a phenomenal actress, especially her being in uh, King James, not King James, uh, King, what's the name of it? 
King Pretty Richard. much the the Serena the Venus and Serena King Richard. That's what it says. King Richard. King Richard. My bad. King Richard. I'm thinking about the Bible. That's bad. <laughs> she also was very very good in that movie as well. So those are my three favorites. Even though Meech took one of them. Well, it only acts for one anyway. So that's what I was gonna say. So you could have just said one, but you know, you you you, you, you had well, you, you had you had other you you had other choices. Moving on. on. Moving on. And continuing on. Moving. So, double A, favorite actor or actress? My uncle, Denzel Washington. And he takes my guy. Okay. Uh, I told you, you you you've been looking at my paper. You you looking at my oh, answers tonight. If, if I wasn't a Christian on this good day, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, you're a Christian today. Yeah, oh. today, today. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, not we all know the powerful roles Denzel played. Um, you know the controversy roles, the uh, uh, inspiring roles, the uh, you know the guys talented. That that's my uh, that's probably my favorite black actor of all time. Good answer, brother. Good answer. Can we get some good answers from the comments, though, Miss Professor? If you would please. Um. Let's see. Uh, Tia said, "Von, so true. If Black history was taught more, maybe we would just be identified as people, and like you said, not by the color of one skin." Mm. Uh, Desiree said, "Just got done streaming myself." She also said, "Samuel L. Jackson is my favorite." Mine's too, but we're gonna get to that later when I get to that part. Um, Eli said Jamie Foxx as an all-around actor and talent. Regina King is an amazing actress because her caliber of talent and skills is phenomenal and underappreciated. Facts. Uh, hmm. Payne said Gabrielle Gabriel Union, Terrence Howard, and Wesley Snipes. I can't stand Gabrielle Union, but anyways, it's Black History Month, so I'm gonna let it slide. Um, Vaughn said Nia Long, especially from her younger years. That Tia said Viola is a great actress and does deserve her flowers, but I'm not looking forward to them eyebrows in her portrayal of Michelle Obama. LOL. Yes, we all saw the still pictures. The eyebrows, I ain't seen it. Oh, I yeah, seen it not, I haven't seen it. Kind of like a oh. this and then a like it, it's yeah. like she's doing well, I'm gonna be honest well, with you, but well, if you just from what y'all describing, if you know Michelle Obama, her eyebrows really do go like that. You're gonna talk about my, uh, so my next, to my next like wife, that. though. You're not gonna do that. Who your next Listen, part? I'm a person who calls Spade a Spade. Oh, Michelle. Okay? Yeah. Oh, we love Michelle, but you know, no, 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 no. y'all not invited to the book club meetings. Y'all, y'all just. Oh, no, no, that's not like I just not invite us no, to the book club. No, meetings. I'm just saying you can't you you can't just take shell from 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 Barry like that. You can't just you you Barry you, you shell alone. Barry Anybody else did. in them comments you can have, but shell? No, you don't. You can't have <laughs> shell. Uh, Tia also said you need to see them because them eyebrows is disrespectful. <laughs> okay. I'm about to say. Okay, dear. I'm about to, I'm about to say. You seen you seen that horse wagon? She be dragging when she be walking to the podium. If anybody, if That's anybody awesome. see them, go That's ahead and drop it. In, if, if anybody got the picture, drop it in my inbox. Yeah. Never mind, don't drop it in my yeah. inbox. I don't want nobody dropping nothing in my inbox. You know what a real stallion look like? Collard greens and cornbread and a PhD. Well, all let, in let, one. let me stop you right there. A stallion is refer is is really a male horse. So okay. we're, not gonna, we're not gonna put you know, that on. You know what the hell I mean? That's gonna we're gonna be on the next show. What the hell I mean? <laughs> we can go ahead and have that for another time. We got one more time. Okay, professor, please. Continue on with the comments, please. I got another on another show. Uh, Vaughn said, "Wait, wait, wait! I lied. Rosario Dawson, she can really get into her roles, and she is just an overall great actress, fine as hell, too." Yes. Oh, wait a minute. We got another one coming in. Flag on the play. Uh, <laughs> Eli said, "So we're not going to talk about the first lady's shoulders. Michelle's shoulders is different. We're not doing that. You know what? Another Thank flag on the play. Not doing that. That's not that. We're going right now. <laughs> <laughs> we got two. Right we got tonight. two personal fouls. Like <laughs> Tia said, Michelle ain't never looked so shocked in life." <laughs> <laughs> Y'all not gonna do yeah, this. Not, not, not Michelle. Not Michelle. Y'all not doing that. Y'all not doing that. We need to talk Michelle and Marks, but in February, let's leave Michelle alone, please. Yeah, 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 yeah we, yeah, yeah. Not, just for tonight. Michelle. Just for tonight. Not leave Michelle alone. 
right. Oh, Lord. Vaughn <laughs> said, leave them shoulder pads alone. You know what? I'm going to just cut off for now. I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> Y'all disrespectful to the No, we needed to laugh though. Not even gonna lie. We needed to laugh. That's a fine woman. Y'all crazy as hell. Anyway. I don't be trying to make my lash come off because I'm laughing. (laughs) Okay. You got got your your lash fixed. All right. Oh, I didn't answer the question. How are you gonna say on to the next question? Oh, sorry, sorry. I was talking to Heather. Heather, I'm host. No, don't do that. Then you messing with Shell, now you're messing with the host. I don't like that. It's black history month. So, Professor, if you can please let us know your favorite actor or actress. I had to, real simple. Cicely Tyson. And if you know, that was an amazing woman, and she acted up until the day she died, which was 97 years old. So, great. But just piggybacking off of Desiree, I did have Samuel L. Jackson wrote down, too. And and the reason why I said, because can't nobody say motherfucker like he can that is why he is my favorite actor. Talk your shit. Because what do you say, Gerald? Motherfucker is a what? <laughs> is a noun. Okay. It describes a person, place, person, or thing. Place, but or thing. actually, I was Bernie Mac, though. But it, he no, uses no, no. it in that form. He uses it in that form. Doesn't matter. He Doesn't uses, matter. But we gonna, we, gonna, we gonna keep it pushing, and it's to me. My favorite actor or actress is Betty White. So we gonna go... <laughs> okay, not Betty White. I'm just joking. But... Since Denzel was taken from me, which I have no problem with. I have no problem with. But I'm gonna go with Chadwick Boseman right now. Because that was that was a that was a king right there. That was a real king. Because you have to have some true, you have to have some true acting ability to be able to embody James Brown, to embody Thurgood Marshall, to embody Jackie Robinson. I don't know why I was about to say Jackie Brown, but Jackie Robinson. <laughs> And so many others. Like, and like I said, that man wasn't here for very long, but he definitely, he definitely left his mark in the acting world at the end of the day. And right now, like I said, we miss you, King, honestly. And let's let me not get started on Black Panther because I don't give a fuck what y'all was talking about. That whole weekend, we was Wakanda forever. And when I went back to work at Wells Fargo, they was like, look, you don't you need to get that spear out of here. You're scaring the customer. So <laughs> so I'm gonna go with Chad Chadwick right now. So that is my favorite actor. And we're gonna go see what they're talking about in the comments. If you would please be so kind. Oh Lord. Eli says, Hey, listen, bruh, the Bengals needed her in the pocket for the Super Bowl. You know what? Let me shut the fuck up. You need to. <laughs> you see that dark, you see the, the dark part of your brain is starting to come out. What a wonderful <laughs> night, yes. Put it back. <laughs> Tia said, let's not forget Ruby D and Ozzy Davis. Yes, yes, God. Mm. Husband and wife, yes. great actor. Yes. Yes. yes, most definitely. Um, Edward said, Idris Elba. Okay. okay. Uh, Eli yeah, said, I love Michelle. She had me down 30 pounds when she changed the health standard. Then Trump came and fucked it all up. Big Mac every day. <laughs> Edward said, I've never seen a Black Panther just because so many people tried to force me to see it. Um, we got a new person in the building, Marmar. Hey, Dominic. Um, Hey girl, what up? What up, girl? Yeah, you I, right remember, I remember you. <laughs> oh, I got some. I got some new. Uh, what's the names that I'm gonna piss you off with? So be on, be on lookout for that. <laughs> Can I finish the comment first? Go ahead, girl. Jamie Fox and Vivica Fox. Now you can talk. Jesus, she said, "Hey, hey, girl. Girl. I said, hey guys." Hey, girl. Omar, you got me in starting stuff already. Go sit in the mm-hmm. corner. So and Eli, you go sit in the corner too, because you on time out. You already yeah. that's his permanent seat, you know that. <laughs> you right. need to turn around when, when you come in, you go straight to the corner. That's what we yeah. want to do. Okay, so we're gonna keep it pushing. We're gonna go straight to the uh next question, which is um name your favorite black history historical biopic. Your favorite his- black history black historical biopic. Hmm. There's so many beautiful faces just to just to start with. And they all looking at me like I'm drunk. So um beg your pardon. Everybody looking like, please don't pick me, please don't pick me. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure y'all got, I'm pretty sure y'all some, got some good ass answers. Please don't say so, my name. So we're gonna start off with the one who steal everybody's shit, me. Damn it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Watch him say my answer though. Watch him say my answer, but go ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll just mother go and come out and say it now. I mean, I'm not, well, then say 40, it. Don't, don't explain that part. Go, go ahead. This is you have to be 42. Um, the Jackie oh. Robinson story. Oh, all right, that means Gerald, you got my answer there. I'm, about to say, <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. This is just, just those two words the Jackie, Jackie Robinson story. Jackie Robinson story. Okay, okay, that was a good one. Chad Wick. Once again, so yes, sir. Brother, we, we miss you. RIP to you. Mm. Um, we're gonna go with the professor again. Favorite bio hidden, hidden figures. Mm. Three mm. black women who are astronauts and astrophysicists. Got it right. Um, come together and help to launch uh what was his name? John Glenn into, into orbit. Space. Okay, okay, okay. Dope hidden choice. Figures. Hidden figures. If you ain't watched it, please go do Check so. Check it out. Okay. Very good movie. Yeah, Very good. definitely. It's worth it's worth watching. None like smart none like smart black women that work together. Um double A. Yes, yes. He came to me first. <laughs> go ahead. I, knew gonna, I just knew you was gonna come to me last. <laughs> I'm not gonna do you like that, brother. Go ahead. Um uh uh, Dave, we've been throwing around a lot lately, but Chadwick Boseman and uh, the James Brown get on up. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> you ran the fuck away. I knew it. Hey, I, knew hey, it. I, knew, I knew you had my answers because you saw my you saw my answers. Hey, Aaron. Yeah, yeah, you, you know how we always say we always put down an extra one just in case somebody got your shit. Yeah. Why did I have mm-hmm. that on mine too? Okay, so we all we always think of the same. Hey. But- Great motherfucker betrayal. Can't knock it. Can't, can't do nothing with it. But go ahead and talk to me from the comments, please, Professor. You know what? Marmar, you can't be laughing because you in the corner. <laughs> it ain't time for you to come out. <laughs> Payne says, does remember the Titans count? For sure. Definitely. Yeah, why wouldn't it? Uh see Marmar Marmar, I ain't told you come out the okay, you can come out the comment, but you better be out at the uh the corner, but you better behave. Hey, Marmar said up. uh Cadillac Records. Eli, mm-hmm. didn't I tell you to sit your ass in the corner? Don't come out. He gonna say maybe Flex Washington betrayal of NJ. <laughs> then he said, nah, it's either Ray or Five Heartbeats. Not gonna lie, <laughs> Ray was on my list too, Eli. Ray was, Ray was on, on my list. Ray was on my list. Marmar said Yes, hidden figures, and also said temptation five heartbeats. My mom said, I'll be good. You better be good because I'm gonna put you in the corner. Next, you're gonna get a whooping. She ain't afraid <laughs> to put people in the corner now. Y'all better be careful. Yes, y'all, 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 see, y- y'all see, I didn't left people yeah, in that corner be so full. Yeah, yeah, people the have corners, to corner the for corners, less. <laughs> believe that. <laughs> my mom be also said up with people, Jackson Five. Mm. Good movie. American dream. I ain't movie. mad. I ain't mad Michael, at that one. Michael, you're gonna get it. Who's <laughs> <laughs> at the time uh, <laughs> Vaughn, yes, the great debaters. Mm. Yes, that's Damn good. Good. great movie. Great movie. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Before we get any more, Heather B. Favorite biopic. Y'all took majority of them. Even Marmar took Cat kind of Life Records. So um, I'm gonna go with what's love got to do with it. They took my other ones, man. Like Whoa. shit. <laughs> Something you gotta tell us, Heather. Everything okay at your house? Really? Yes, everything really? is perfectly fine. <laughs> well, sing the song. I'll sing the song. Anime. Sing the song. You show sure? something. No, my mind. No, my I ain't gonna go in there. <laughs> he, he ain't slapping you with every word. He ain't slapping you with every word. Is it? Don't you ever talk to me like that? He eat the, the cake, the anime. Mm-hmm. Eat the cake. Mm. I want right you like the sure cake, anyway? I'm, I'm just coming saying, for you. Sure, you ain't getting no boots put off on you right now. <laughs> okay. Blink twice if you okay. <laughs> I'm, okay. Sure, I'm just making sure ain't no boots getting put off at, at the house. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, if anything, just make it the limo scene. Well, she did get beat, but she whooped his ass too. So I'm gonna need you. If it's gonna be that way, at least get, at least did you at least pinch the motherfucker? At least <laughs> piece the bitch. Yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I'm just saying being healed with being hit in the heel with a boot with a, <laughs> being hit with the, with the heel of the cowboy boot. That 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 ain't nothing to eat. That ain't nothing to walk from easily. But anyway. Well, she didn't walk, she ran. You see how she ran and almost got hit by the car? Yeah, with a swollen face. That that that's, the why, that's the reason why she almost got hit by the car. She, she, she ran the freedom. She, she black, both of her shit. She couldn't see. But anyway, um my fa- my one of my favorite biopics, honestly, and it was mentioned earlier, is Panther. Panther is a Panther was a great movie. Panther was uh, I, I just love the portrayals of uh, Huey P. Newton and Bobby Seals in the movie, and Bobby Hutton and the rest of the Black Panthers that were uh, that basically fought and up there in Oakland, how they got their names and etc. So um, yes, Panthers would be my one of my favorite biopics as of this moment. So. Since we are getting hella comments and they're absolutely funny, evidently, so we go keep it pushing, Professor. If you would please, uh, Tia said, Does the original Sparkle count? Yes, yeah. um, Vaughn says, On everything, oh, everything good at her house, okay, Vaughn. You know what? Ooh. Now that I hear his song, every time I hear his name, it go Vaughn. Vaughn, that stupid ass song is in my head. I'm not gonna keep saying your name, Vaughn. Oh shit. <laughs> Thought about that. Uh Vaughn said Hotel R- Rwanda. Man. Mm-hmm. Hold on, because let me read this because I can't with him today. Eli said, Can somebody tell me how Ray heard a hummingbird? I'm still baffled. First of all, do you know that all your other senses are heightened when you lose one? Um he, he said he is the real life handicapped man in living color. All right, I'm done. Going back to the corner, throws a wrap and right back to the corner. Oh, Lord. And then Marmar responds to Eli by saying, uh, Ray is blind, not deaf. Thank you. <laughs> Cha-ching. That was deaf, but you, we get it. We get it. I I, I know, I, but I, I read it the right way. Deaf. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she, oh, she understood. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I understood. It's dead. It's over my head. Oh, oh, yeah, it definitely went over my head, and I read it. That's the crazy part. So oh, right. mm-hmm. it went over my head, and I read it. So I was like, yeah, "Oh, I know what she mean." That's how I read. But anyway, um, we going on to the next question. Um, mm, what is something that still exists today that is throughout history still? What is something that is uh, that still happens in Black history today that still going throughout history so we're gonna go with mm. <laughs> professor go ahead <laughs> she just ready like racism right. unjust laws and white privilege okay it is i mean it's, it's the truth at the end of the day it's the truth at the end of the day so yes. double a What's something that still happens that happened in black history that still is happening throughout today? The the lack of the value of the black man's life. Which is very true. Which is very, very true. Um they couldn't up in the comments. I'm not playing with them today. I'm sorry. Miss Miss Heather oh. B. <laughs> ah, well, they're taking my answers again, but colorism. Colorism okay. is still very much a thing as it was before, if not worse now, because now it's really within our own, it's really within our, our within black people period. It's not just white people separating us, we're separating our own selves now. So definitely colorism. Okay, okay. Can you please let us know what still affects people today in history that it did back then in the comments uh marmar uh she didn't mean death <laughs> she didn't mean death uh marmar also said racism tia said ass whoopings in some black families in most black families um Max. i whoop my guy baby believe that <laughs> we both do uh okay. eli responded <laughs> to the <laughs> to his own comment and said laugh out loud but still they were in a diner full of people loud as hell the bird was outside the window humming 
hummingbird wings aren't that loud maybe i guess you got to think about like this he's deaf so the hummingbird's wings the sound of it is vibrating it's heightened it's 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 it's, uh vibrating off the window so that vibration is what he can uh feel and hear so i'm i'm just saying i'm just giving you a little bit of knowledge uh eli knowledge is power Bond says kidnapping and selling our children and organs for their benefit and to use as guinea pigs and what they call societal growth. Well, talk no shit. Get out. Get out. Bond, I'm going to call you Mitz. I said I can't be saying Bond. Jesus. <laughs> Stacy said, well, Payne said, the lack of education in majority black communities and let's just add Hispanics as well. Talk now, that's shit. a great fucking comment. Talk your shit, Payne. Um, T said, I might whoop my kids just for old time's sake. Laugh my ass up. I'm a mandated reporter, T. Knock it off. I am too, but I ain't gonna tell. They did something what that you that you don't know about. <laughs> Eli said, LOL, I agree, I appreciate it. Well, you know what? You're welcome, Eli. I'm just saying we're here to learn you a little bit. We're here to learn you. That's all while you in the corona, you're gonna get a lesson. Yeah, we we were here to learn you. All right. Um, I guess it's on me and me. So, me stuff that happens in back in Black history, and that still happens today. I have to I have to say violence, especially black on black violence. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Thanks, well, all my answers were taken, so. <laughs> I'm just gonna pick the one and emphasize on it. I'm gonna say white privilege because white privilege is basically how, I mean, even nepotism is happening still. So like I said, we're not getting jobs, not because we're not qualified, but because a person knows a person at the end of the day. And they feel that they can do better just because of they know or because of the color of their skin. And the funny thing about it is when they hire that person, they fuck their whole company up at the end of the day. And just because, like I said, we actually go to school and we actually take the time out to do what needs to be done to get these jobs and to get these um, and to have equal opportunity. And it's still not, it still is not created for us just because people don't like us because we're, uh, because of the color of our skin, basically. So, that's basically what it is, and that's it. That's all. Do we have any more comments before we go to the next question? Eli mm -hmm. said redlining still exists. And then Marmar said they advertise black violence more in the media, but there is equal white violence in the world, but it's not advertised to the world. So they make black people look like we are all criminals and are the only people out here committing crimes. Talking and and y'all. If y'all know Mama Cookie is watching, I know she's catching us at the end. Mama Cookie is watching. Hey, hey Mama Cookie. <laughs> um, Vaughn said to abuse our status to help their party is the economic, it's the economy by blindsiding us with trinkets to take our money that keeps us in the ghettos and work. Slave like jobs, not making enough to get us to a higher status financially that will allow us to live normal like life to force us into a more different type of slavery. Talk uh, your shit. Man, uh, bro, you on fire tonight. I love it. Marmar said, Marmar said, then people ask why we use the word nigga and it's all in our music because the white man controls hip hop and they will allow us to use um they will allow us to use the word nigga and allow us to disrespect ourselves in the media but they would not allow anyone to advertise music with the word hunky or cracker in it facts y'all oh, all took y'all shit i'm loving y'all right now yes he said hey y'all hey. Hey, hey how you doing uh von says slavery never left it was altered and modified to fit modern times Mm, that's Ooh. deep. Mm -hmm. Walmart said, I am yes. talk texting because I'm being lazy. Laugh a lot. So if there is anywhere <laughs> is, is misspelled, excuse me. It's okay, Marmar. You know, a lot of people do that. And it, it just makes me look like I can't read. That's all that is. It's just. <laughs> that's it. 
that's it. But all right, all okay. right, all right. Now that y'all talking, y'all shit in the comments, let's move to the next question. Um, yeah, sure. What is your favorite quote by a famous black person? What is your favorite quote by a famous black person? So, um, we gonna start off with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite quote is: "If you don't, if you don't, <laughs> if you're not given, basically, if you're not given a seat at the table, bring a folding chair." And that is by Miss Shirley Chisholm. If you don't have a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. I like that. That's, I that's like deep. That that's deep and that's good at the end of the day. So we're going to go to the next person, which is the professor, your favorite quote. Defining myself as opposed to being defined by others is one of the most difficult challenges I face. And that's Carol Mosley Brown, who was a politician and a lawyer. Swag, swag. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Meech, your favorite quote by a famous black person. And this one stuck out to me, and I can definitely relate to that. Like, this one comes from Marcus Garvey, and it says, If you have no confidence in self, you are twice defeated in the race of life. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. Talk it. Talk it, talk it. Now, can we please find out what they talking in the comments? <laughs> Lord Jesus. Marmar apologizes. It's okay, Marmar. They're used to it by now. Um, Vaughn says, I agree with the music. It's all mental conditioning. Marmar also said, favorite quote was, I will fuck a kid up, Bernie Mac. Because <laughs> 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 I will. Uh, <laughs> my famous quote by Bernie Mac is, fuck them kids. But that's just me. Um, Stacy wrote or pain wrote, God damn, motherfucker. Okay, <laughs> you know what? And that suits you so well, pain. Sam, <laughs> <you> so well. <laughs> he said, Sam Jackson. I, I know, I know. Uh, Tia said, I had a dream because that can be interpreted in me in any way you want, need it to be. Okay, um, Vaughn said, You be once defeated is to find. Calls for an everlasting struggle to reach the top. Marcus Garvey. Yo, yo, Bob, we, we, we here, brother. I see, I see you, my boy. Okay, okay, okay. We're going back to the panel. Double A. Favorite um, quote. A man who stands for nothing, a man who stands for nothing will fall for anything. Malcolm X. Right on, right on. Heather B, favorite quote. The paradox of education is precisely this, precisely this, that as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which he is being educated by James Baldwin. Nice. Nice. Very nice. We got one more comment before we move on to the next question. And uh, it's Eli. He said, just because everyone else walk off a cliff don't mean you have to follow, you big dummy. My granddaddy. <laughs> and I'm only laughing because that's really one of those quotes that everybody, family members, or mom or dad use. So if they jump off a cliff, you're going to jump off too? Or, or <laughs> I'm like, he said my granddaddy. <laughs> if, if, if all your friends jump off a bridge, you going to do it? Or, or <laughs> something like, like I'm like, how you doing today, Granny? Well, sometimes you the bug, sometimes you the windshield. What the fuck does that mean, Granny? <laughs> 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 okay, um, okay. <laughs> no plan, no plan. Z's in the building and she said, Hey, UTR family. Hey, Z. Hey, hey Z. Z. What's hey, going on? All right, that, that's all. Oh, wait, we got one more. Vine said, Yeah, because I'm smart. I got a parachute. Watch me fly, mama. Run <laughs> to the corner. Hey, Jordan, that was your response to this. <laughs> and now you're back in the corner. Well, you're in the okay. corner now. First time I'm tonight. Sorry. Okay. Go to the corner. So, go directly to the corner. Do not pass go. Do not get out the corner. <laughs> All right. Next question. What does Black history mean to you? What does Black history mean to you? Hmm. Double A. What does Black history mean to you? All right. I'm going to be a little long-winded. So y'all uh, 
bear with me. I know we at the cutoff point of our two hour show, but um yes. Yeah. I'll try it's to make okay. it we can go a little bit longer. Just it's I'll, okay. Talk your shit. I'll read a little quick. Um well, black history means the millions of people who came before me and the ones that will come after me that will continue to make a difference in this world. It means even when our ancestor was taken from Africa and enslaved for 400 years, it means the Emancipation of Proclamation was signed and we are still enslaved. It includes highlight moments like the Underground Railroad, the Montgomery bus ride boycott, the Selma uh, to, to uh, Montgomery march. Um, it means my children and I will live in a nation where we are judged by our character um, and not by the color of our skin. It means that I can work for places like NASA and, and serve as brains behind the, the greatest uh, operation in which in history um, that sent Glenn to outer space into orbit. It means I can break away from Negro leagues and become one of the most biggest and influential baseball player in African American history. It means I can take it means I can one day be auth I can be an author, a doctor, an athlete, an entertainer, a president, etc. Black history means so much. Black history is also a division. Um, black history is a culture. I am black history. I love my history. Right on, brother. Uh, and that's so, pretty much it. You just said everything. <laughs> Honestly, we don't need to go. Don't know don't. Need to go at that point. Like, and that, 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 that pretty much. So to, yeah, to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure everything he said pretty much summed up everything we all wrote. But it, so, so we're well, we gonna keep it pushing and we, we go gonna, to the comments. We're gonna keep it pushing and go to the comments. Uh, sorry, y'all. Yeah, no, 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 talk your shit, brother. Um, talk your Bond shit. Said we, we, we love that response. Bond said, Fine, but I'm gonna complain the whole time. You know what, Bond? <laughs> You're gonna get a spanking next. You might like that shit. Let me stop. Uh Eli said, Boy, you die in this world by a white hand, I'll kill you. My grandma, all facts. <laughs> I've come to realize, Eli, that your whole family is violent. Uh Mama Cookie said, You must never be fearful about what you are doing when it's right. Rosa Parks. And she said, Sorry for the late response. She had a phone call. Go ahead, Miss Cookie. We we go didn't ahead, even go on there. Okay. We see. Uh, Marmar said what he says drops Mike. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, now, people, we have come to the end of our Black History segment. But before we go, we want to first of all, <laughs> first of all, give our uh our final thoughts. Ooh, so, wait. Ooh, we got, got one, one more. more. All right. Oh Lord. Y'all like to make me read. I hope this is all wrote right, Vaughn. And I, did you come out the corner? <laughs> Jesus. Black history to me is hope. There is no other way I can explain it. In life, we are people. We as people live and grow in fear of our lives being taken for no reason. Being nothing but a disposable pawn to, to childlike men who threw deadly tantrums when things challenged their power or authority. And to see how I repeat how on repeat in history see you messing up no matter how much they try to break us down we have that strong willpower to fight a fight that they are taught but a fight we have in our blood for generations we can over we can over coke dark times <laughs> times and change the the beat of the world hope is power and we have more than we think eli says it's the South, life hit different. And it's the South, life hits different. LOL, so you might be right. And then Vaughn says, I'm drunk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we I like that excuses for coming up because y'all don't know how to write it. Then y'all make me sound like I don't know how to read. We okay. get the message. All right. All right. You All right. All right. Nation of <laughs> Watch you. <laughs> So we're going to go to our last comments. And of course, we always start with our lovely creator, Miss Heather B. Last comment. Of course, I have to thank everybody for coming out, commenting, sharing, reacting. We truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, this was one of our more serious shows. So we do appreciate you guys coming out and showing support to this 
Um, Black History Month is something that, like we said before, needs to constantly be celebrated. And to be honest with you, Black history is us, period. And we have to continue on to make history, period. That's all I got to say. Okay. Okay. Meach, last remarks. Hmm. I just want to say, like, you know, everyone, everyone that came and showed out tonight, man, y'all was on fire. And... And I have to say, like, we we as African Americans, we are we are definitely beyond the scope of what people what people realize. Like, there's so much depth to us. So, don't be afraid to showcase your depth, and your abilities in life. Because once you once you do, you too could be a part of. You too can write your chapters in Black history. Talk your shit. Talk your shit, Meech. Double A. I'm, I'm saying. Last remarks. Um, you guys said a lot and said it all, but um, thank you for all who support us. Um, I also like to thank Heather uh, for giving me a stage to give my opinion on what Black history means to me. So uh, not only those who support us, but thank you for giving me this platform. And I just want to use Black History Month uh, as a reminder to all of us on this platform that um, the tongue is powerful and it can lead a lot of people a lot of different directions. So y'all continue to lead people in the right direction and we can talk shit the right way. But uh, this, I'm all grateful tonight. So I, I love the show. I love my history. I love Black history. I love American history, period. Talk your talk shit. Your shit talk, talk your shit, brother. The professor. I want to first start off by saying if I put you in a corner, you can come out now because it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> um, but I will say this. No matter what you do in life, remember it becomes history. But just make sure your history is one for the books, okay? Make sure that your history is taught. It's shown. Make a difference in the world. Leave a mark. Live, love, and laugh. Yes, Professor. And that's coming from the professor. Now, from the rebel. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to everyone that came in tonight. We had a lot of first time seers, a lot of first time commenters. No pun intended. But we appreciate that. <laughs> we appreciate that. And we appreciate the fact that y'all rocking with us. This is one of our first serious shows and y'all came and showed up and showed out. That's giving us the encouragement and also the drive to do more shows like this at the end of the day. Yeah, we're all fun and games at the end of the day because we do love each other as a family. We do gel together as a lot of people have stated, but you know, at the end of the day, there are serious topics and serious issues that I believe that the, that me and the rest of this four panels can can discuss as well as you all in the comments. And furthermore, we love you all. And not to mention, but this is my last response. Remember to remember it's the magic that's in you, in you, that can give the inspiration to inspire the rest of the world. So that's what you need to remember that we are all special in our own little way. And it's the magic in you that will give the magic to someone else that will inspire. Because like I said, like Tupac also said, I might not, I might not uh, change the world, but I guarantee I will spark it. So, at, and with that being said, the rebel is out. This is the end of, excuse me, continue. <laughs> we have a few comments. So yeah, we these are pretty good ones too. So uh, Eli says, sorry for the Gemini coming out tonight, y'all. It's been a week, but I appreciate the show. And Eli, we love you. You know, me putting you in the corner. If I don't put you in the corner, I don't love you. Just so you know. If I don't put you in the corner, I don't love you. I don't like you. <laughs> Just plain and simple. Uh, Payne says, very enlightening show, crew. Max appreciation for the history lesson and the newfound appreciation for my culture. Keep up the good work you did uh mama cookie said black history month is a reminder to all americans that their country will not be as wealthy and as sustainable today if it were not for the innovation hard work 
intellect and courage of black Americans that came before us. Talk oh, your so shit, true. Mama Cook. Oh, oh, that really. shit, Mama Cook. Yeah. Um, Vaughn said, y'all are definitely my like-minded individuals. I love to be around. I'm absolutely coming back next show. Uh, all love. Nah, I'm going to stay. <laughs> <laughs> um mama nice appreciation um z said bravo utr y'all just made your own black history thank you z mm. thank you mm. and, with and with that, that being, being said with that being said people we are out of here we love y'all thank y'all continue to grow with us and be with us and remember we're black, y'all, and we black, y'all, and we blacker than black, and we black, y'all. Love y'all. We out of here. <laughs>